What's up? My name is Julian Williams, and I take Expedite. Some days I walk into the gym, and I don't necessarily feel like working. I take a scoop or two of this, be ready to go. It's the best stuff I've ever had. Expedite. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Marcos Viegas. This is uh, Fight Hub TV, and I'm being joined here with Joshua Greer. Out uh, back home, right? You're back home? No, I'm in uh, Houston training right now. Oh, man, you're back to training already. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, uh, we saw you last week. Uh, you, you fought on ESPN. Obviously, it wasn't the, uh, the result that uh, you wanted to get. But uh, overall, man, what did you think about uh, what happened uh, in your fight against Mac, uh, Mike uh, Plania? I think it was uh, against uh, Mike Planilla. It was a great learning experience for me. You know what I mean? Uh, I made some mistakes in the fight that uh, uh, cost me the fight, and I rallied in too late. You know what I mean? But it's all a good learning experience for me, and it, um, a lit, it, it lit my flame. And, you know what I mean? I'm uh, eager, and, eager and more hungry to come back uh, and um, make a statement and, you know, just uh, be great. What do you think went wrong in the fight? Uh, uh, early on, uh, you know, he, I, I made some mistakes that, uh, that cost me to fight, uh, keeping my right hand down when I jab, and, uh, I found out he couldn't fight inside uh, a little too late, and he held on at the end, but he was already up by points, and, um, it cost me to fight. How many times have you, uh, looked over the fight and, and just kind of been analyzing everything? Uh, I looked at that fight more than, um, uh, more than about 20 times already. Wow. Yeah, because, I mean, that was a big uh, heartbreaking fight for me. And um, it, it, it made me just, like I said, man, it just made me more eager to come back and be stronger and um, get the job done next time. Yeah, I know when uh, an undefeated fighter suffers their first loss, it, it, you know, each fighter's different. They take it differently, but it's, it's a hard thing for, for a professional athlete, uh, especially I know how competitive you guys are. Uh, to take yeah. that first loss. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm I'm a very competitive person, you know what I mean? So uh, that first night, the, the first night, that fight, the first night, it really uh, it really hit me hard, you know what I mean? It was really uh, a devastating moment for me, you know? It was, like, surreal, but it really, you know what I mean? It was uh, heartbreaking and devastating for me. That next morning, I woke up, though. I woke up with a plan, and I said, I'm going to get better. And um, I woke up with a plan, you know what I mean? And uh, automatically, I'm already starting my plan, and I'm uh, looking – already forward to my road to redemption when uh, i remember the fight you know the, the first round he caught you with uh that hook um joe why do you feel he's able to catch you like were, were you feeling a little bit cold like were you not warmed up did, did he just catch you like off guard like explain to me like what happened when he did catch you in that first round um i'm sure you know those could be into play but you know he just uh he did he did the right things at the, at the right moment you know i mean i want to think anything from him he did the right thing at the right moment and um I'm looking, I'm looking, you know what I mean, forward to, you know what I mean, uh, having a rematch and, uh, you know, fixing all those mistakes and making all the adjustments early and straight through the game. Yeah, he seemed like he was an awkward guy. Like, his, his timing was, like, really, really awkward, like, with his shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like, like I said, I don't want to take anything from him. He did everything he had to do in the moment, you know what I mean? And I'm just uh, uh, ready for the road to redemption and the rematches and do it. You know, when you see him as a fighter, um, was did you underestimate him at all, or, or was there like tape, a lot of tape available to go ahead and, and be prepared to what he was gonna bring? Uh, no, I didn't. Under, I don't underestimate anybody. You know, what I mean, I didn't underestimate him at all. Um, he's, uh, I mean, it's, it's tape on there, but I mean, the tape really, you know, doesn't mean anything. But that's why being a great fighter is about making adjustments that's in there. Because if you look at the tape. Yeah, he haven't, you know, he, all of his recent fights are against guys that, you know, you can't, uh, he, you can see really, you know, much like the guys didn't really bring it up to the table, you know what I mean? So you can see much, but you know, it's all, you know, um, a learning experience. It's about making adjustments on the fly. That's what makes the great fighters great fighters. You know, this um, COVID thing that, that's, that's happening, uh, especially for professional fighters, I know um, training conditions aren't ideal. Like, were you able to get adequate training, good, great sparring uh, in the buildup and preparation for this fight? Or, or was that a little bit of a difficulty for you? 
You know what, Marcos? Uh, I don't want to make any excuses. You know what I mean? I don't want to. I, I, I had this point. I work. I don't want to make any excuses. You know what I mean? He came. He he made the the, the good adjustments at the at the right moments, and he did what he had to do. And um, I'm just looking forward to the rematch. I don't want to make any excuses. I don't want to take anything from him. That night, he did what he had to do. That night, and I'm looking forward to the next night. No, no, I, I feel you, but you know, it, it, these conditions are not ideal. You know, like it's it's a yeah, lot of most people. Definitely. But you know, it's about adapting. You know, because COVID affected the whole world, so I'm sure it affected him too. You know what I mean? And and his camp. You know what I mean? So you can't make no excuses. It affected everybody in this world. You know what I mean? Not just me. Not just you know somebody else or certain fighters. You know, it affected everybody. So everybody about you know has to adjust to these times that we in, and it's about you know who adjusts the best. How was it fighting there and not having a crowd there? Like, how was that experience? Oh, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it, you could get a little, a little relaxed. It feel like it's a sparring session almost until you feel those eight ounce lives. You're like, oh, this is the real deal. It's for real. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, it's like a dream and somebody wake you up, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's like that, but you know, it's a, it's a great experience. And I think top rank for the opportunity. Was it? Just going through the whole thing, like having to enter the bubble and going through that all that that protocol, like how how was it for you to experience all that? Tell me a little bit about that because I would think like oh man, it's the, a very the, the, different the scary, thing. The scariest night is when you first come in and you take that test. That's the scariest night because you have to wait on a call to uh, tell you if you're negative or positive, and they call you between five and eight or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. And um, that's the scariest night, man, because it's like. If they call you to tell you positive, like, well, anybody on your team is positive, the fight is canceled. So from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., I'm just like, please go let my phone ring, guys. Please. Like, anytime my phone vibrate, a notification, I'm just like, oh, shit. Oh, it's, you know what I mean? But, I mean, once you get past that, and then you have to take another test after the weigh-in. So you're like, man, I hope I, you, you second-guess yourself. Like, I did grab a doorknob or I did, you know, touch something. Well, you know, after you pass all those things, it's just, you know, it, those are the only scary parts about it. That's it. How do you pass the time during that time? Because um, from what I've read, you guys are quarantined, right? Like, you can't leave your Yeah, rooms. yeah, yeah. We, we, we're, quarantined in, um, we're quarantined in our room. Thank you. We're quarantined in our room. And it's, uh, it's just isolation, man. You just got to, you know, um, you, got your, you got two team members with you, so, you know, you can interact with them. And it's just, you know, it's just relaxing, right? So it wasn't anything that it stressed you out a little bit or like you were going like stir nah. crazy being in there? No, nah, because really, I mean, it's the same thing I do before a fight anyway. I'm not like, you know, super active a day or two before a fight. I'm not out, you know, interacting with everybody. I'm in my room just chilling, just focusing on what I need to do. Did you get a chance to like observe how the inside of the MGM was like how like normal life was going on? Uh, the, when you first, when you first get there, that's it. When you first get there, you check in your hotel, you get to see like people in the casino, but that's about the only time. That's it. After that, it's a wrap. You're in the boat. Was there people in the casino? Oh yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And oh they wow. Check your temperatures when you first come in. Oh, that's a trip. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of people in the casino though. Yeah. Dang. Okay. All right. I, Cause I would have thought it would have been like practically like a ghost town. No, no, not at all. Yeah, <laughs> that's so crazy. Um, so you get through with the fight, okay? And uh, like, what happens like to the fighters like after they get through with the fight in terms of like being in the bubble? Like, it's just like you guys can bounce right away, or there's still like things you got to do there. No, I'm sure guys can bounce right away, but when you bounce, there's no coming back. You know what I mean? So, um. Me and my team, we waited until our uh, flights the next morning. And we left. But I'm sure you can leave uh, anytime you want. I've elevated downstairs. There's no coming test it again. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine you, I, I know you mentioned it earlier, but that, that must have been a, a long plane ride, huh? Yo, yeah, man. It's definitely a, a long. But you know what? One thing I like about, you know, being on a plane is uh, it's my time to think. You know what I mean? Uh, no phones, no nothing. It's just, uh, it's what I think the most. So I was just, you know, contemplating my next move. You know what I mean? My next move and my game plan, you know what I mean? To come back and come back in this game stronger, better, faster, you know, uh, to be world champion when I come back in. That's all I was contemplating on, my, uh, on that plane. How can I do that? What's my next step? And uh, on that plane, you know, I, uh, before I got on the plane, I talked with my team. 
and we put some moves together. And once I was on that plane, I made some decisions. And um, that's, I mean, I'm here in Houston today, and I'm working hard. Yeah, so talk a little bit about the decisions that you uh, did decide to, to do and uh, what are you going to change? Because obviously uh, you're from Chicago, but you're in Houston, so I would imagine you changed up camps. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, uh, now I'm out here. Uh, I'm uh, out here with my manager, James Prince. I'm working with uh, 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 Coach K. Caromo and some things. And um, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, talk with Jay about uh, – uh, in a rematch, and I'm looking forward to the rematch whenever it is. Yo, you, yes, you. Thank you so much for watching this video, and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV, and give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.